good afternoon everyone i hope you're all well thank you for joining me live in studio today it's all a bit in a bit of a rush today we're still working hard on getting everybody's orders out the door so please be patient i know you are always um anyway but yep yeah, we're getting through them thankfully so for those of you that are new to the studio maybe here in wakefield my name is tony derrick and this is a fabulous place where you can come and get some inspiration for all your crafty goodies, whether it be ours or another branded products, we do encourage you to just come and say hi and take the inspiration away with you. One thing we do encourage though is click that subscribe button, then you'll never miss a show. Uh, and that bell, and that gives you a half an hour notice whenever there's going to be something live here in the studio at Wakefield. So if you are at home on your own and you're just needing a little bit of creativity, then it's a great place to be. We are here every single day, unless I'm on TV. Okay, so in today's studio, everybody's well. Let's have a look. So, hi Claire, Tracy, Jill, David. Hi David, Amanda, Charlotte, Marilyn, Sarah, Phil. So, I hope you're all well. The weather's still not the warmest, is it? So, this is the How to Craft um, channel, How to Craft Channel Network, and you can come and get all sorts of inspiration from lots of lovely, happy faces. So, you've got me, Simon, Claire, Carly. We all love to come and inspire you. Did you all see Simon today on Creating Craft? Oh, I just wanted to give him a big squeeze. He was so professional. He didn't even look nervous, did he? Not like me, like this, for like a year. He was so professional. Um, and he's going to give me a call when he gets home, tell me all about it. So I'm super excited about that one. So if you are, he won't be watching because he'll be driving. But well done, Simon. We're very proud of you today. So in today's studio, I'm going to show you how I made this lovely um, album on the Quintessential with the I'm Marla with Carly. So it was a 12 by 12, which required no scoring and no measuring whatsoever. Um, I did get an email about it and it's on my blackboard. You see, I have a list on my blackboard on there. Also, we've got, um, can we do the scoreboard in the Eureka? We've got lots of things on the list and I'm, every time I do one, I cross it off. So this was the next one that I wanted to do, to do while it was fresh out of the box. With regards to the Eureka scoreboard one, I'm going to do an in-depth one with that one because there's quite a bit of uh, a few things that you can do using that board. So I'm going to do an in-depth one on that one when we get more time. So, but in the meantime, I'm going to cross off some of those lovely requests on the list, and this was one of them. So let's have a look. Simon was amazing, wasn't he? So was the card of the show. Yes, he did a he did a sterling job. So in today's studio, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the quintessential pinks. You don't have to have these papers to create this project. Dig out your stash. I'm going to use a one sheet of 12 by 12, and these are not double-sided. We chose not to do them double-sided because I hate deciding. Okay, so I'm going with this one today. And I've also got um, one of the pieces that I fussy cut a piece out of. And I'm going to use this sort of design here for my embossing folder today. So most of you will probably know that I'm live tomorrow on Create and Craft quarter past 11 and I think it's quarter past 3. I will be here in my own studio but it will be via Zoom from Create and Craft. So we have our embossing folders back in stock. Yay! And our subscription box number 2. Okay, so um, I know a lot of you are like, no, not yet. Don't worry, if it sells out we will do it again. So don't feel the pain of having to buy the box if uh, budget doesn't permit. Okay, but stay tuned for the inspiration and record the show if you want to because you can always go back and revisit the inspiration and maybe use it with something else, maybe box 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and have some fun. So I've just taken a piece out of the 12 by 12 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the actual um, makings of the book. It's really, really easy. So I'll just set that aside and just get rid of this one for now. So I have my um, embossing folder and it, I'm going to use the one with the P in it and I'm going to fussy cut it out. Now, I know a lot of you have used this one. We did the painting with it yesterday, didn't we? But I'm going to cut it out today because it looks beautiful fussy cut. It really does. So I'm going to take my embossing folder and because I'm fussy cutting just that element there, I'm going to just cut the piece that I want rather than waste the paper. So let's go, let's just go this piece here. And again, all of these off cuts that we have, remember the sort of collage, mixed media one I did, put them to one side and use them for those collages because they look really, really cool. So I'm just going to pop that onto my embossing fold so you can see that there. I'm just going to get which part I want on the emboss. I'm probably going to go the lighter part if I can. 
then I can add a little bit of ink. So let's go, say there, I'll just trim this excess off. So with regards to your plates, then we all have different machines, which is absolutely fine. You're just going to have to check your plates on your machine and which work best for you. If your machine doesn't accept it, don't force it, because you will break your machine, whatever machine it is. Okay, so um, play around with your plates. If it goes through too easy, then shim it out maybe with a piece of card or something like that. So I've still got my plates in place from last time. So let's go ahead and see if we, like I'm embossing here onto paper, so I might have to go back and shim because it might not do it, but I'm going to give it a go and we'll see how it works because I know a lot of you have got the cut emboss, so it's, it's food for thought for you guys at home, whatever happens. So I'm just putting my mats on top here and then we'll pop this one through. And we'll just, oops, am I turned on? There we go. So I'll run this one through. So I eventually will get to show you the lovely embossing folders tomorrow live on TV because as you all probably know, most of you will know that they sold out before my live shows. So I didn't actually get to do the shows at all. But hopefully this time I will be able to. So for those of you that did buy them, hopefully I can show you some ways to use them. And for those that missed out, Hopefully you'll get be able to grab them if you still want them. Oh, it's done it beautifully. I don't know. Show this on the front here. Let's just do it forwards. There we go. Look at that. Incredible. The three D element of it is really, really cool. One of the best I've ever seen. So what I'm going to do is I am going to fussy cut this one out because this is going to be part of my little mini album. Now these mini albums take minutes, so if you are selling your products or you are planning on doing some nice craft fairs when we get back up and running, which we can see light at the end of the tunnel, um, these are really, really quick to do and I'm certain you've all got piles of 12 by 12 paper that you fell in love with at the time and have not used. So you'd be able to di dig them out and get some, get some lovely, lovely projects made with them. So let's just quickly fussy cut around here. So I'm just going to follow the design. It's actually quite easy to cut because the emboss is so deep, it sort of pushes your scissors in the, in the right area. Make sure I'm not cutting through a leaf there. Absolutely love the um, single sort of flower design that you get with our embossing folders. And we have lots more designs coming. We also have a new concept as well, which I don't think I've ever seen before. So that's super cool too. I'm excited about that. And no, I don't ever get any sleep if anybody asks. I really don't. <laughs> so other than that, is everybody okay? Everybody fit and well? You know, don't forget to stay connected whilst we're still in lockdown. Not sure how long it's going to last, are we? But there is light. Has everybody, um, well not everybody because I know everybody won't have, but have we all had our vaccines? Have we had notification for vaccines? I'm last on the list unfortunately, but it's okay. I'm fit and well and I'm younger than probably most, so I'm happy to wait. But for those of you that are not, have we had our notifications? What's going on with it all? You'll have to let us know. So here we have our beautiful, I don't, I'll hold it. There we go, look at that. Look at the emboss on that, it's absolutely beautiful. So let's pop some ink on here and just sort of highlight it a little bit. Now you can watercolour, however you can't saturate, it is the, just the paper out of the pad, but I am going to add a little bit of colour just to highlight. So I'm going to go with what's in my paper, the piece of paper that I've picked today, which is the one that's got a lot of the brick um, working for something different today. So I'm going to grab my little sponge dauber here. And I'll just grab one of them. Any will do, Tony. And we'll try and highlight some of the areas on here. So let's try um brushed corduroy because that's sort of, sort of a brownie tone isn't it so let's see where this takes us bring this down to here i 
Uh, a lot of people, oh, frontline workers just had theirs. Well done, Claire. Thank you for all you've done so far for a sweetheart. Had mine. Jan David and Janet's had theirs on Friday. I know Karen Whitaker, she's had hers. Can't wait for mine. Well done. Oh, good. Good, good. It's music to my ears, hey? So let's get some colour onto this lovely design. So I'm just using the top of my sponge door, but just see if you can see now, you can see that detail. I'm not going too heavy with this because I'm just going to try and highlight a little bit of it. It's not quite the colour I wanted. So I'm just adding a little, little bit. And then I'm going to go over with one that's got a bit more red in it. You can see already how it's coming together. The more ink you add, the more detail you're going to see. So let's just swap that out for like this aged mahogany one, which has got like a red undertone. That's better. It's in keeping with my papers, that's all. So I'm just going around the outside edge. So you can see it's coming to life now. So I've done it on that pattern paper because I think embossing folders don't really get used on pattern paper and I think they're really pretty on pattern. You can see there how gorgeous that is. There we go. So I'm going to leave that be. What I'm going to do now is get rid of the ink. I'm going to add some sparkle and then it can be drying whilst we're doing our album. So, some glue and some glitter. Now, any glitter, this is a chunky one. Let's just see if I can find my finer one on my trolley. I've got that much stuff on my trolley. You'd be horrified if you saw the state of my trolley. It is loved though and it does get used every day. So, let's pop some glue on here. So, all I'm doing here is I'm just popping some glue where I want a little bit of sparkle. So I'm going to pop it on those lines. I'm going to use those lines that are in that embossing folder as a little bit of a guide where I want some sparkle. So I'm not everywhere. Just where those lines are. And then this can be drying whilst we move on to the sort of construction part of our album. Now, I call it an album. It's more gift quality. You can pop a photo in. Um, but it's just the name that most people will know or associate with if I call it an album. But it's more a gift wallet, really. So, after the conversation yesterday with our lovely painting, so... The month of March is National Craft Month, so it's to encourage you to get back into your craft if you've lost your mojo, or maybe try a new craft. So did you see the banner that I popped on the Stamped By Me page? I haven't had a chance to pop it on the Eureka fan page yet, but check it out. Um, so you'll be pay we've decided to do the Saturday morning, and all you need to, and just before the show, it's every Saturday in March, and just before the show, I will show you um, the items that you'll need to come along and create. And it will be things, don't worry, please don't think, oh, it's going to cost me money. I, honestly, it won't cost you money. I will also pop on there alternatives if you don't have um, what we've asked you to get. So just pop that spark on there and that white glue will dry back. So let's just set that aside and leave it be. So I will show alternatives if you don't actually have the products. And we're just going to have like a little coffee morning. So we'll have a coffee and we'll just paint a very, very simple picture together for an hour and a half. The chat will be on. It will be on the overhead. So we'll just have some creative fun and then we can all show our makes on the Eureka fan page when we finish. And hopefully it will just be that little bit of distraction and hopefully you may, might enjoy it and, you know, do it more often. Is that okay? So check out the Stamps by Me page. I've popped it on the banner. It's got the times on there. Um, if you are interested in it, will you just put a comment underneath, uh, just so I know if I'm not going to be here on my own? <laughs> just let me know. So, let's do our fabulous album. So, I didn't come up with this idea. I saw it about three years ago on YouTube. Um, and to be honest with you, it's just an off the, th off the quick, off the cuff sort of quick thing that we've made. So, if I get it wrong, 
at least we get it wrong together. <laughs> so 12 by 12, okay? Here you can see. I'm just going to turn it over here. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold it in half. So if you're crafting along, just fold it in half, like so. And you need to give the score line a really good score line, okay? So get your bone folder out, give your paper a really, really good score line, okay? So this is just in half. I'm just going to sort of. Okay, so then all I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half this way. And try and line up the best you can. If you don't line it up quite great, it's not the end of the world, but do try and get them straight, okay? So I'll just push that down. So I'll give it a really good score line. So if you've got your tools and things like that, turn it over, give it a good score line. There we go. So we've got sort of just a twelve. Let me just show you. So we've got twelve by twelve in four quarters. Okay, so far, so far. Okay. So let's just put it back, and then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it again. I'm just going to fold it in half again. Get it as straight as possible. Sorry about the head. Fold it down and give it a good score. I'm just going to. Really give that a good crease. Good luck trying to get rid of us lot, Tony. <laughs> yeah, if you pop a comment on, then I at least know what to expect. Um, and then if I have to send it out in a newsletter as well. But I thought it'd be great for us all just to get together rather than, you know, uh, me do all the work all the time. Maybe let's do it together so I can see what you guys have been up to too. Because I, I love to see what everybody's doing as well. So let's just open this out and show you what's going on. So now you can see we have four rectangles and four. Okay, super, super easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little slit from this score line here to this score line here. Just a little opening, okay? So I just take my scissors and I'm just going to trim out Trim off that little edge so I've got an opening in the centre. Very, very small. Make sure you do take it to that score line. It has to go to that score line or else your book will not be very, will not really open. Let's have a look. Have we got a hole? Then you've got a hole. Look. Can we see the hole? Yeah. So then all you do, this is the complicated part, if there is a complicated part, which there isn't, but all you need to do then is where you've got that hole is open it up and sort of push it like so. Does that make sense? Did you see what I did there? So let's just show you again. Very, very simple. So there's my hole. Can we see that there? It'll only go the way it needs to go. So if you're trying to force it, it's probably not the right way. So all I'm doing is opening the hole. You see that there? Open your hole. I'll show you very slowly. So open the hole and push. And then close. Does that make sense? And then give it a good score line. And then you have, obviously, if you look here now, we have our work first page, second page, third page, fourth page, okay? So the great thing about popping that slot in there means we can put some decorative elements in, so like a tag, a photo, whatever we want to pop in the top here. So you can see it's got some openings on there. So you can pop tags in there as well. But also what it means as well, let me just show you here, look, is you have some open-sided pockets as well. So the scope to pop tags, toppers, photos, embellishments and things like that in, is incredible. Now you can seal the pocket and we see here, we can seal these and we can pop some glue on here. Okay, and we can seal the pocket. So let's go ahead and show you how we get the closure part on, okay, which is really, really easy. So I'm just going to grab some twine. Now you can use twine, ribbon, if you're making like a new baby one or a new boy or 
a travel one or just a gift one with like a Costa card in saying, hey, let's have coffee, something like that. This is wet, I don't know why. Something's leaking on my table, I don't know why. So let's just sort out this mess and let's get some twine. So what we're going to do is we're going to create one of those creative ones where you wrap the, like this here, I'll show you here, look, just set this aside. So this is just wrapped around, you see here? So you wrap it, that one's come undone. So you just wrap it around, so you grab both like so, sorry, and then you just pop them both around the sort of button effect design. You see that here? So let's show you how I did this, really, really simple. Is anybody into those sort of like albums or, you know, mini albums and things like that? Does anybody like to do all those sorts of things? Or are we all just card makers? You'll have to let me know. You could close these with magnets too. If you have the posh magnets, I don't have any, but if you have the posh magnets, you can absolutely go for it. So all I'm going to do is I just have this piece of twine. Look, I'm just going to double it up like so. So the legs are even. And then the piece that's just got the little loop on the back there, just going to tape it to the back of our book. I'll just drop some tape. So we will hide the makings, but you can see now already, when you bring this round to the front, it'll have that wrapping sort of mechanism at the front there. I will cover that up. So let's do the button part at the front. So all I did with the button part was I, one second. Let's just freehand it, eh? So let's just, so I have this piece of hot cut. Now you can draw around something if you're not like the best cutter in the world or take sort of something to draw around, pop it on. Let's just grab a pen here. Draw around something circular to create that little button. I think for the one on the um, one I'm showing you, I made on TV, I did a one pence piece. Make sure it's straight, obviously. One pence piece. I'm just going to quickly cut this one out. Oh, so if you've got a circular punch, they are those little handy circular punches. They're quite handy, aren't they? Looking more like an oval now. Have you? <laughs> Does anybody else do that? Start with something really big, and the more you cut off, the more you cut off, it ends up being like the size of a pea by the time you finished. <laughs> Happens to me all the time. Swear. So all I'm going to do with this little circle that we've done here is I'm just going to take my po pokey tool carefully, very carefully, I'm going to punch a hole in one side and a hole in the other to make like a button. You can see that there, so I've got two holes in there to make this sort of button effect. And then I'm just going to take another piece of twine. And I'm going to thread it through as if the button is part of the sort of mechanism. I'm just going to push this through the hole. And then the other one through the other hole. Me tone it. Oh, you're all the same as me then, hey? I'm not the only one. Honestly, I am awful. <laughs> Some people make it look so easy, don't they, though? Do you not think? I do you lot say that I, I make it look so easy. I really don't. Like now, like I'm trying to thread this through here under pressure. It's just not just not having the effect <laughs> that I want. <laughs> ah. Let's get my pokey tool and push it through, hey? Be careful with the pokey tools, though. We don't want anybody in A&E. Not right now, anyway. So through one hole and down into the other one. Can you see why I don't sew buttons? <laughs> so then you have this sort of look. Can we see how we've got that lovely sort of twine in the button there? So then all I did was, with the back side of it, just tied it in a little knot, put a little knot in there, and then I trimmed off its leg, like so. And I trimmed off the legs. So I've got that sort of effect there. And then I just grabbed a pad, 
and I raised it up so you know so you can wrap the twine behind so I put one pad on and I know that's going to hold my twine in place take that one off and then I popped another one on ready to go so that gives me the chance to wrap that twine around because it's super deep you can see that there so you can see here when you come to pop it on your project it um, gives you that sort of mechanism to wrap the twine around So let's hide the makings of our back here. Can we see this here? So I'm just going to use again this off cut here and I'm just going to create myself a little bit of a border. So you can mount it and mat and layer it and make it as pretty as you want to. But you can see here, if you add those banners and borders, it sort of gets rid of those, that ugly mess. So you could personalise with names. So you can see now you can't see your makings, which is way, way better. So let's do something with the inside. So let me just show you what this one has. Let me just pop my um, pin in my glue here. So um, I'm just going to grab the off cut again. So this is an off cut that I've got. So it just shows you how far this absolutely goes. So let's create some pockets. Now the way that I create pockets, excuse me, is I just cut some cardstock to maybe the same size as the front of my book. So whatever that size is. So let's have a look what size it is, and then you're all going to know. So it's three, just over three by six. Okay which 12 by 12 into 8 is. So let's just cut that design. So I'm just going to go 3 and 6, exactly the same size as our book. But then what I'm going to do to create the pocket is I'm going to cut it from corner to corner. So I'm going to pop it in the guillotine. I'm going to pop this corner on the blade and this corner on the blade at the bottom. And then when I've got all corners on the blade and I'm happy it's straight, I'm going to cut it. And this is how you get pockets in your books. Let's move that out of the way. So if you look here, look, this is where, so if you just open the centre of your book, say, this is where you get your pocket. You can see that there. So let's glue this one in. Very, very simple. You can put pockets on every page if you want to. I'm just going to glue down the side and down the base. And because it's the same size as our book, it's going to fit seamlessly. So that's one little pocket. And then I might pop a little pocket on this one. Um, I might go it that way, like this way on this one. You can see that there? on here so if you do like a gift wallet like this or a little album or something like that with a handmade card this could have the five pounds in it or whatever you give your family and then um the card could be a matching card with the matching paper that you've used that'd be pretty wouldn't it just going to cut this corner off here you can see now just cut that top off too reaching over the top so you can see now we've got one page with a pocket, another page. We've got another one here, another pocket here. And then we've got that beautiful design on the back. And then we have this open design here, which I am going to seal shut because I'm going to put a tag in it. I'm just going to take my glue and seal that whole pocket shut. Do you not think it's cool that you can create something like this without having to get a ruler out? I do time saving or what get folding paper folding i think it's great is there a box that you could make put cream eggs in for the grandchildren at easter a box my gosh are you testing me now what a box without measuring <laughs> could you imagine i will have a look i will have a look i aim to please no i can't always do it but i'll try 
So I've sealed that pocket up there so it's open at the top now. So I can put in there a bookmark if you've got somebody who reads. You could put four bookmarks in the top of there if you wanted to. I'm also going to seal this one shut as well. Is it, Tracy, it is a fab idea and you'll be able to make lots. And I know if you're selling your mapes as well, um, you know like at Christmas with the big poinsettia leaves and the big pine cones that you get in your garden, can you imagine dressing the front of them with all of those and then putting your sparkled chunks of ice glitter on? My gosh, people are just going to be like, is that for me? Like, what's in it? You want nobody's ever going to throw that away. It's like a tag. Or if you pierced a hole in the top and attached it to a gift, which is wrapped in the coordinating paper, my gosh, people are going to think you're awesome, aren't they? So let's have a look here. So like, say, for instance, this mat and lair here, which could have a photo of a baby, a family member, you know, sending a hug. These can go into your pockets like so. And then the tag here, what we made um, live on air, can go in one of the pockets. Hopefully it will fit. Let's have a look. Oh, look at that. Just fit tight. Oh, no, it's gone in. And then at the top of your tag, if you want to pop some twine at the top, like, take a bow and tag twine it at the top, then it's going to coordinate, isn't it? So it just shows you how, and obviously cut them to size yourself on your own. I just want to take that back out now because that belongs in the other one. Um, but the paper, pick some papers with some decorative elements on that are not plain or bland or flat. And then you don't, if somebody doesn't want to decorate it, they don't have to actually decorate it. So let's go and construct this book in a better way then. So let's just get rid of that tag for now. And then this is the embossing folder. Look at this now. Really, really pretty. So I'm loving the overhang on here on the base. You see that there? Loving that. So I'm just going to glue this absolutely flat. Look at that on the deboss side. These um, embossing folders, if you make it look like the leather paper too, you know, the leather like um, the craft paper where you add the ink and then you scrunch it up and it looks like leather. These embossing folders would be incredible on that because the deboss is so deep. And then you just take your um, button, fake button. Now you could use a real button if you've got real ones. I'm just going with what I have and I'm going to pop it on top of that emboss folder so it looks like it's part of that background design. I'm going to leave the overhang because I think it's quite pretty. See that there? And you could pop a name or whatever you want to around there. So that is your gift wallet. Absolutely good to go. So that's that one. And this is the one that you asked me about on the TV. Let's just pop that back in there. And these are the tags and toppers that you can build into the pockets and things like that. So there we go. I'll, um, I can't hold them up. I'll just leave them down here for the picture at the end if that's okay because I can't hold them up. Um, but there we go. So two, 12 by 12 piece of paper. I'm sorry it's a short studio today. I didn't actually expect to get through that as quick as I actually did. But um, make sure that you do check the um, Stamps by Me Facebook page, Read a Painting, we're going to be doing. And it's not going to be complicated. I promise you it won't be complicated. It'll be sort of like a sunset background and then we'll paint in some single leaves in silhouettes in black. And then hopefully at the end of March, you'll have something to be proud of that you might actually frame or give to somebody. So I do encourage you to get involved. It's, it's nice to get together, whatever um, the circumstances. Oh, can we have a peek at the new creative book? I don't have it in here. I don't have it in here, unfortunately, so I can't. No, I don't. Um, I'm live with it here tomorrow, though. Um, and in tomorrow's creative box, it's got a super large word die. You make me so happy. It's A5. It's huge. So it speaks for itself. It doesn't need much else on the card. But I'll show you all tomorrow. Um, so quarter past 11, create and craft. I hope that you can join in, even if it is just for the inspiration.
So whatever you're doing, stay safe. I will pop a nice picture on of this. If anybody's got any questions about the folding or the creasing and things like that, just message us over on Facebook and somebody will be able to help you. Uh, and don't forget to show us your makes. Even if you, it's not decorated, show me one that you've actually got a 12 by 12 folded and done. Okay, so um, lovely to see you all. I will catch you all tomorrow on Create and Craft, then back with you on Friday at three o'clock for some more inspiration. I'll see you all then, guys. Honestly, take care, stay connected, and I'll see you all then. See you later. Bye.